Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to do a, a wood turning, but a wood turning with a bit of a difference. Um, in the comments section I have noticed over the, over the years, um, from people from different parts of the world, say to me, um, we don't have trees uh, like you have in Australia. The wood is uh, not easy to come by, as in, uh, you know, a raw piece of wood straight from a tree. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to demonstrate to you that you can use, or what I'm actually going to do is I've got a piece of uh, thick planking. Now this is a, like a, a joist uh, of a, a building, second story building, the flooring, um, and it's Baltic pine. That's beautiful Baltic pine. Um, and I'm also going to, and I'm, I'm going to cut and layer that up. Uh, and I've also gone out and purchased bamboo. Now this is a cutting board made of bamboo. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, like I say, layer up the Baltic pine, cut it and layer it up. And um, I'm going to machine a bowl on the lathe out of that. But um, I want a contrasting rim. So what I'm going to do then, I mean, this is less than five dollars from the, you know, the dollar shop. Um, I'm just going to um, then, when I know the diameter of the neck or the top of the bowl. Thank you. When I know the diameter of the neck of the bowl, I then know uh, how much of this to cut and then we will um, glue this or laminate it onto the uh, end of the, the bowl and uh, machine this then uh, as, an, as a neck. Uh, I'll be using the lathe then as a press to uh, hold it there for a few hours for the uh, the glue to go off sufficient for me to cut it. So um, I'll show you what the laminated block of this looks like now. Okay, um, so this is the block of wood that now, uh, after it's been layered up. Now I've used um, Irwin clamps on this, but you know, you, you could actually you use um, a piece of, you know, layer this up on a, a bench or the ground even, and uh, put a concrete block on it. You know, just something to compress it down and hold it nice and flat uh, and firm. You don't necessarily need to use airway crack. So now, hopefully you can see how I've layered this up. Um, if I can hold this so the camera can see. So this outer one, I have the, the grain in this pattern and I've put the, the grain of the central one uh, in exact opposite direction, the grain going in the exact opposite direction to make it like an S pattern. Um, and then this one I think is gonna be the base. Uh, also I, I do know that that central one there does have a nice knot in it. So that's going to look very nice in the, in the wall of the, the bowl. Uh, these features, um, or what they call inclusions, you can machine a bowl and have that, uh, you know, sort of center stage, and it really makes the bowl come alive, uh, or the object that you're, you're actually making. Okay, so what you actually do is just find this, the rough center, of the material, which is there like that. And so you go corner to corner. That's pretty well the, the center. Uh, what we're going to do is I am going to scribe a, a circle on here and uh, I'm going to put it in the bandsaw and just take the corners off. And uh, I might show you a little bit of that, but uh, it's pretty boring really. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so what you do is simply, because you've got a cross there, so you know exactly where this rough center is, and you just pop your face plate on there, and you can, by eye, sight it. You can get it within half a millimeter of the, the center. It's still going to be a, a little off round because we've just put it through the band saw. It's, it's not to perfect. attach the face plate now to this material. What I use is very substantial screws. Now they've got a little bolt head on them, and uh, four of these is quite sufficient to hang on to this material. Now I use a, a variety of gouges, uh, roughing gouges, to um, to machine the outside of the um, the bowl. Now this is a, a large roughing gouge, so we have a intermediate roughing gouge and a small gouge. Um, so between these uh, three, and sometimes I use the um, the bowl gouge as well which is this one. Um, this is a 5.8 bowl gouge. Uh, to even do the outside, I, I do some shear scraping sometimes with this, and I'll demonstrate what shear scraping is uh, when we get down that far. So, first tool in the arsenal is the large roughing gauge. Now, the operation of this uh, what you do is you you start with the, what the term rubbing the bevel. Now what that simply means is as the material is moving around, okay, like this, um, the back edge here, which this, this is the bevel, this, this edge here, you see, bevel, there. Now that is touching the material. And what you'll see me doing uh, is I'll lift the back edge up and start the start the cutting edge there, just shaving the material off. Okay, and I'll sort of get to a, a stage where I'm comfortable that it's machining what I need it to machine off. Now, what I personally do is stand it with my feet in a, a T formation and hold the chisel into your body and move your whole body like this. Just rock back and forth on your, your hips and your legs. Okay? And you will make small adjustments moving the, the chisel up and down to get a, a deeper cut or a shallower cut as the, um, the material peels off. So um, I'll just show you a little bit of that.
The uh, nice square edge is uh, a pattern off tool actually. I'm going to just plunge it in. About a quarter of an inch, and that's enough. Okay, so you can see now that the that I've machined into here, okay, an angular lip inside there. Now that angular lip, if you notice, it's the same angle as what this um, grip or tooth is of this this jaw. So when this opens out, it grips and pulls in that way. Okay, so this surface here is hard up against the wood there. Okay, and as it's been pulled out this way, it's actually pushing further in that way. So it's grabbing it tighter and tighter. So I hope you can see that action there. So that's the idea of a, of a tenon. the same process as actually hollowing the, the bowl out. Um, so what do you do? You get your spindle gouge and a little bit of RPM. And line the spindle gauge up there. That's a little bit too high so we'll lower it just slightly. Okay, so I'm just going to get the spindle gauge and just plunge. That's made it a little better, so that gives the drill a bit better start. Now there are many different methods of hollowing a bowl, uh, or should we say techniques. Um, I use two types, well actually three types. Uh, you can either um, start the cut here, rub the bevel, or use the bevel as a bit of a break on the material and push in, which is my favoured method. You can rotate the uh, blade around like this and use the bottom wing to cut or scrape and you use a like a rowing method like an arc like this um, or you can start inside like this and draw it out as well that's another method but um, I use a combination of all three it's whatever uh, sort of feels uh, as though it's working with the material uh, that you're machining because uh, I've got two different types of material here plus there's uh, three different grain patterns and um, we'll see, I, I think the bamboo is by far the hardest material to machine so I'll just get my face mask and uh, 
We'll see how it goes. About 800 RPM is about fine. So the rowing method is just this. Don't try to take too much material off. You just arc it like this. My favorite me uh, method is and um, you start the cup off like this, use the bevel as a bit of a break and push in. I personally get a lot, a lot more feel of the, the tool. Okay, so what you can also do, I don't know whether you notice, let me just fire the blade up again. Using um, this method, you, you'll, you'll notice as the tool just starts to apply, it'll kick it back this way. Watch. Oh. See, it naturally kicks it back out. So that can ruin uh, your your bowl um, if you <laughs> if you uh, you know sort of don't keep an eye on that sort of thing. So what I tend to do sometimes, more often than not actually, is I get my parting off tool. And I'm going to lower this down a bit for that. Take him out. Give myself a bit of clearance. Now what I want to do is I want to indicate as far out as I want to go. I don't really want to go any further than that, so I'm going to make a, a decent mark with my parting off tool. Spinning quite fast. And just... Oh, do you know what I should do? I should give it a scrape, actually. I'm going to... This is what they call shear scraping. Um, actually, I'll just um, I'll just do a cut here first, just to even things up. You notice there's a little bit. I'm just trimming the surface up here. Doesn't need need to go any further. And now we will Ooh, that's quite tough. So that has now given me a definite that's as far as I want to go. It just gives you that bit of break as well that uh, your tool's not going to go in and machine into here where you don't want uh, to machine. Okay, so I shall just continue hollowing the bowl out now. At 800 RPM. Open the bevel, and just allowing the the, the the cutter, the cutting surface just here, to just start, or just take a cut. Follow the cut down. Into the sander. If the cut's going a little bit too deep, just pull the tool around so the, the bevel brings the cutting surface back out of the material a bit. 
Well, that turned out to be a very, very nice bowl indeed. So you don't need um, a tree trunk or a limb to make a bowl and season it. You can actually make a very, very presentable bowl um, with industrial planking that's already been dried out and seasoned and bamboo I think the bamboo on the top is uh, a very very nice touch I, I really like that I think I'm going to try more with uh, bamboo actually and actually having the bamboo and the way this is the the, the grain patterns in this it sort of reminds me of a Asian dragon with with scales and uh, bamboo bamboo crown. So um, I should actually call this, I think, something like um, oh the Asian dragon bowl or the royal Asian dragon bowl with the 
bamboo crown. Let me know what you think. <laughs> so, thank you for joining me for this wood turning video and I hope it's helped some of you out um, with some of the different ways to use the, the tools, the chisels, uh, and the best practices to, to actually machine without uh, damaging you or your your bowl or part. Uh, if you have, please press uh, like and subscribe to my channel because that's you know, how the channel grows and uh, also pass it on to your friends if you would like because that's another good way the track channel grows. And um, please visit, visit my channel, I have two channels now. Get to the second channel by pressing this little uh, bar here, or indeed this bar here. Uh, some of the music in the background is by Con O'Neill Music. Um, and you, there'll be a link to his website and where you can purchase uh, his albums. And of course on my channel you will see videos regarding wood turning, CNC routing, lasers, CNC milling and shop jobs that I do around here. So uh, thank you very much for joining me and it's bye for now.